G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel today, continuing this little redraft series that I've been doing. Uh, if you've been watching the channel lately, you would have seen I've redrafted the 2022 draft. I redrafted 2021, and I am now today having a crack at the 2020 draft. Now I've got to say, this one by far was the most difficult. This is an absolute minefield of a draft. It wasn't until I really got stuck into trying to analyze it in preparation for this video that I realized how poor this draft actually was. It is only early days, like these guys have only gone through three seasons at AFL level so far. So things could surprise us, but in comparison to some of the other drafts that I've done um, both you know, recently and in the past, it was so much harder to, to split the hairs of some of these picks and I think it was after about pick seven, I started going, oh, wow, were we that deep into the draft already? But anyway, I don't mean to sh throw shade and disrespect these players. Um, I'm more just trying to express how difficult this actually was so I can understand if there is a little bit of discontent with this particular one. But we're going to have a crack anyway. Uh, this was the draft of Jamara Ugal Hagen as an academy bid going pick one. It was considered a bit of a shallow draft. And of course, this year was that of the pandemic as well. And it was considered a pretty shallow draft because there were so many kids who had missed... Uh, um, you know, junior football. But yeah, tough stuff. It, uh, it was tough to get 20 players out and uh, it was really hard to split some of those guys and there was a few unlucky ones as well. But without further ado, uh, let's crack into it. So with pick one, uh, it's Adelaide that hold the bid in this scenario. And uh, in real life, they bid on Jamara Ugal Hagen. I'm going to get them to do that again. Now, Errol Golden is there and available. But again, the, the premise of this video is trying to get in the mind of recruiters and what they would do if the draft was redrafted today. And I think, you know, the upside of a keeper position forward such as Ugal Hagen sort of gives him a little bit of a, an advantage in that sense over a midfielder even though Errol Golden is fantastic. I think generally clubs would tend to gravitate towards the gun key forward prospect. So I've got Ugal Hagen going at the same pick. At pick one he's played 45 games now and had a pretty good season. Bit of a breakout year this year. 35 goals from 23 games for the Bulldogs. So Adelaide back on the board and I'm going to get them to bid again on uh, Sydney's Errol Golden. Now, as I just said, Golden is a fantastic player. Massive breakout year from him this year. Averaged 27 touches and a goal a game. He's played 27 games now. Came fourth in the brown low, and uh, the interesting scenario with this one is if Sydney match this bid, it'll actually absorb their next pick, uh, which was the Logan McDonald a couple picks later. So, Ugal Hagen pick one, Errol Golden pick two. Adelaide finally have their actual number one draft pick, which now sits at pick three. And uh, instead of taking Riley Philthorpe, I reckon they go with Logan McDonald. This this time again kind of discriminating a little bit on position key forwards uh you know top level high potential key forwards are super valuable and even though logan mcdonald's not necessarily the third ranked player in this draft as it stands he still has shown enough to be probably one of the most valuable young key forward commodities in the league right now and he will be out of contract in 12 months time and we'll see evidence of that but he's played 44 games now similar to Ugal Hagen a big step up in output 32 goals from 20 games this year so Adelaide go McDonald instead of Thilthorpe. Then we've got North Melbourne who originally took Will Phillips with his particular pick I'm going to get them to take Jai Newcomb. Now, Jai Newcomb actually went undrafted in this draft, um, and I presume he nominated for it because he was eligible for the following year's mid-season draft. So he would have been eligible for this year's draft. I'm going to pick him as uh, the second best performing midfielder in this draft so far. Uh, 51 games now. I think he was in the All-Australian Top 40 squad, which shows you know, pretty good going for a young 22-year-old midfielder. Average 25 touches and five and a half clearances a game. So Newcomb is a very valuable commodity and would go high if it was redrafted. Pick five, Hawthorne originally took Denver Granger Brass here. I've got them taking Ollie Henry from the Geelong Football Club. Obviously, he went at pick 17 originally to Collingwood in this particular draft and subsequently made his way to Geelong. So he had 28 goals from 25 games at Collingwood, had a good breakout year this year with 41 goals from 22 games. So that sort of proven element uh, puts him pretty high up the rankings as well as his raw potential, which I still think we have, you know, we've seen far from the best of him yet. At pick six, I've got the Gold Coast Suns bidding on another Northern Academies talent to the Sydney Football Club in Braden Campbell. This was originally bid on the pick before by the Hawthorne Football Club. He is now an established best 22 defender at Sydney, averaging about 16 touches a game, played 48 games, good ball use, just looks like a pretty good, reliable player for Sydney. And therefore, you know, it's in a draft where there isn't a lot of competition, Braden Campbell would go high again. Then pick seven, the Gold Coast Suns are back on the clock. Riley Filthorpe 
Hall lands here. They originally took Elijah Hollins and, of course, still thought went at pick two. But comparatively to the other key forwards in this draft, hasn't quite, you know, excelled to the same extent. But he's a long-term prospect. So I could totally understand if people think he should go higher than this pick. And he probably should, to be honest. But we've seen 46 games of Phil Thorpe now. 18 goals from 24 games this year is a fairly modest return. Obviously, he still has a stack of potential and will probably reach it. But I have him sliding just a little bit. At pick eight, this is where it's getting tough. Uh, this was really tough. I have the next best player, probably Max Holmes at Essendon. Uh, now, they originally took Nick Cox, but Max Holmes has, um, he was originally drafted at pick 20 to Geelong and put in 51 games as sort of like a wingman and a bit more of a midfielder these days as well. Averages about 19 disposals a game. Would be a premiership player if he didn't get injured in the prelim final in 2022. And I just think as a safe bet with some upside, Max Holmes is the next best pick. Essendon have three picks in a row here. So the next pick, they went with Archie Perkins. I'll give them Archie Perkins again. That's probably about right for his range right now. He's played 62 games as a forward mid hybrid. Um, he's had fairly modest impact, but we do see him as an X-factor type with a lot of upside. So he could still get there, and he's probably around the range where he's about to explode anyway, but hasn't quite, you know comparatively to someone like an Ollie Henry, hasn't had the same impact at AFL level. But the upside there, the attributes, he's still a role player at the Essendon Football Club. He's still going to go about the same pick that he went in the original draft. At pick 10, Essendon originally took Zach Reid. To be honest with this, I in this scenario, Essendon probably wouldn't go three midfielders. But I thought them reaching for a tall here is probably a little bit unrealistic. So I've just got the next player that I think is the next best player. And that's going to be Will Phillips from North Melbourne, who was originally drafted at pick three to North Melbourne, which was a surprise at the time. Most people thought it would be Logan McDonald and they plucked Will Phillips. He's played 32 games. He has been battling injury as well. I think there was a groin in there originally. As in, I know he has a groin, but I think he was drafted with a groin injury. I'm not too sure, but he's played 32 games and uh, 16 games this year. Finally, we saw a little bit of continuity for him, averaging 19 touches and four clearances a game, which are solid numbers. So Will Phillips is still tracking okay. At pick 11, the Adelaide Crows with their second pick of the draft after taking Logan McDonald. They originally took Luke Pedler here, but I've got them taking Tanner Brun this time. Tanner Brun only went one pick later to the Giants. He's played 49 games now across two clubs. Obviously, he's now at Geelong, and he played 19 games in his first season there for about 16 touches a game and three clearances. So track okay decently for a young inside midfielder. It was really hard to split that in the next pick, so I have GWS then taking Pedler, which is the inverse of what actually happened in real life. Uh, he's played 26 games, 21 of them this year, so he actually had a really good season this year, in which he kicked 25 goals and had about 12 touches a game as that kind of medium forward. So again, you could argue he should be a little bit higher, but it probably would favor the young inside mids who still have you know, a fair bit of upside first. Okay, so this is now the part of the draft where I felt like it became a bit of a shit show because the, every single player that I tried to make a case for being in this top 20 had some sort of caveat. So they'd, you know, they'd started their career well and then fallen away or injury's been a factor. Or you know, in some cases, I've just seen far more of one player than the other. So it's hard not to, to be biased and it's, it's difficult to be balanced. So I would imagine this is where we all have different opinions. But at pick 13, I've got North Melbourne taking Heath Chapman. They took Tom Powell. Tom Powell arguably could be around this range again, but I went for Heath Chapman because uh, he had a really good start to his career. He's been injury ravaged over the last couple of years, but six foot four running uh, defender slash, I think he's going to be more of a wingman going forward. And he's played 26 games and they've all been pretty good, but he has been ravaged by injury. So you could understand him dropping, but I think this would probably be about right on talent. Then at Fremantle's pick, having just missed out on Heath Chapman, I've got them plucking Ollie Lord. Ollie Lord originally went pick 49 to Port Adelaide in this draft. He debuted this year and I hadn't heard of him until like the back end of this year anyway. He played 13 games though and kicked 15 goals, including a bag of four in a qualifying final for the power against the Lions it was. So, you know, that's a pretty good crack for, for a young key forward in his first season as a player. And he's still pretty raw, 197 centimeters, 87 kilos. Again, it's a massive reach a little bit, but there's a lot of speculative picks around this range anyway. So why not take the punt on a key forward that seems to have some talent? At pick 15, I've got the GWS Giants. Originally, they took Connor Stone. I've got them taking Sam Durham. Now, this is another player from the 2021 mid-season draft um, who has played 49 games for Essendon now. He's established himself as the best 22 wingman. 
His output's not outstanding. The production is about 16 disposals a game on average. Again, we're just looking at stats here, but if you're going to be a best 22 player at your club, you're probably going to feature high in this draft. So I'm pretty comfortable with Sam Durham around this range, which brings us to Collingwood for the first time in this draft. At pick 16, they originally took Oli Henry, and now I've got them taking their own player in Bo McCreary. So uh, he was originally pick 44 to Collingwood in this same draft. He's now played 60 games. He is now a premiership player and a good solid role player there is that sort of an impact defensive forward. So he kicked 17 goals this year from 25 games, which isn't outstanding for a forward. In fact, it's a little bit below average, but he does average four tackles a game. And I think if you're a premiership player and play a solid role in that Collingwood lineup, then there's some value to you. And he's certainly going to go in the first round of this year's draft. So uh, pick 17 is then where we see a bid from GWS on Lockie Jones. I think this happened like one pick uh, before this. I think the Pies bid on, him, uh, bid on him originally. But we've seen Lockie Jones a fair bit at AFL level, played 35 games and came into the league as a ready-made halfback flanker. He's in Port Adelaide's best 22. I think there's been some issues, uh, injury issues there. Is he absolutely locked into that best 22? Probably not. Averages just about 10 and a half disposals a game, but still, we've, he's had more exposure than most of the guys that I'm trying to, you know, he, that he's competing with for this pick. So with the match bid, GWS is back on the clock uh, at pick 18 now. They originally took Ryan Angwin. Now I've got them taking Nick Cox, who originally went pick eight to the SNF Football Club. Now, this was a tough one because on talent, he probably goes higher. But, you know, we all remember his 2021 season, first onto the scene as a 200 centimeter wingman, a great utility, really good athleticism, and a heap of upside, right? But since then, he's been absolutely ravaged by injury. He played the last six games of the year this year. We're still trying to figure out exactly what his role is at AFL level. Brad Scott's alluded to, you know, not they're going to tinker a little bit with what different roles he will play in the team. So I still think he goes first round because the, the talent is shallow in this draft. So they take a punt on an injury prone player. So hopefully he pulls it together. Hopefully he puts it together. It's not his fault he was being injured. I misspoke. At pick 19, oh, this is where it's getting speculative. Collingwood is now on the board. They originally took Finlay McRae. Uh, I've got them taking North Melbourne's Eddie Ford. This is a player I actually don't know a whole heap about, but I've sort of been obviously doing research for this video. He was originally pick 56 to North Melbourne in this draft. He played, he's played 22 games, 14 of them this year, and got about a goal a game, which is a solid return. But we did see a Rising Star nomination for him at the back end of this year, and probably a little bit of recency bias. I, I do like the fact that he's 189 centimeters. He's pretty good size for a forward. And his output, to be honest, like on current form, is just beating out a lot of the guys that I also considered for this pick. Now, pick 20, Geelong are on the board. This is the most outrageous one of all, probably. But I, uh, they originally took Max Holmes. There are so many players to consider here, but there's actually one guy that I do like the look of, and he's played two games. He's played two games for the Gold Coast Suns, but Ned Moyle as a 205 centimeter ruckman. He was originally undrafted. He went in uh, pick five of the mid-season draft, which goes to show that I have three players from the mid-season draft the following year qualify for the first round of this year's draft, which really speaks to how unsure we were about the 2020 draft going into it. A lot of players missed out and then, you know, got redrafted. So anyway, Ned Moyle, uh, he, like I said, he's only played two games at AFL level, but he had 35 hitouts on debut. He had 18 um, as well in his second game. So, you know, pretty good numbers when you compare it to Samson Ryan. I just think you consider the upside that this guy has. Again, I'm not ranking on what he's done at AFL level. I'm ranking on how valuable he is as a prospect if it was redrafted again. So I like to look at Ned Moyle and I think he has a future at AFL level. So I'll, I'll list some of the other players that I had tearing my hair out. Like this was a difficult video. So Tom Powell uh, was taken in the first round by North just on output. Like he didn't even compare favorably to Eddie Ford. So he's probably in the same range, but I just had him sliding out. Sam Berry is a player that's looked really good for Adelaide in the past. He fell out of the side, combination of injury and form this year, I think. Tyler Brockman's probably around the range. He was best 22 at Hawthorne. Samson Ryan was the other Ruckman that I considered, and potentially he does go instead of Ned Moyle. So I'll leave that to your opinion. Elijah Hollands, like the look of him, played nine games at AFL level. Uh, played you know in the VFL Premiership for the Gold Coast Suns, but again, just so little at AFL level. And then someone like Seamus Mitchell, whose numbers suggest that he should be around the mark. He got a Rising Star nomination. Um, but I just haven't seen that much of him. It was hard to make a case for him. So that's about six or seven players that I listed that I wanted to probably have around this video. But like I said, it was a crapshoot after pick 13. So let me know if I'm missing something. What would you have done differently? I feel like, you know, I'm fairly comfortable with a lot of the picks I did in the 21 and 22 redraft. 2020, like I said, 
really difficult. So I can't wait to get into 2019 next. Hopefully that will be easier. There's some big names in that draft. Um, and then 2018 as well was another really strong draft. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching the channel. Let me know in the comments what you think. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.